Hello everyone. So, hope you enjoyed your meal. Um, I must apologize a little bit. Uh, we have a panel here and uh, my two co-panelists are a little bit late. Uh, their plane was delayed today in uh, the morning. Uh, but I have uh, a small project to show to you before they come. They'll be here in five minutes. So uh, let's start by this. So just let me move to Unreal. It's a new tech that we created. It's an emotional digital twin. As you can see. And Hey, what are you doing with that mouse move? Oh, we're not alone. Hello, everyone. Alexi, come say hi. Hello, hello. Oh, but we are in Prague for the Unreal Fest, but I don't see our physical twins. Mm, Mo said they're running a bit late, so we need to fill in. Mm. Let's introduce them while we wait. Good idea. I'll start. Arlene, my older self, is Head of Strategy, Corporate and External Communication at Valeo Power Division. And my twin, Alexis, is the director of the Advanced and Creative Design Department at Alstom. Both of them had the vision to leverage new technologies and real-time 3D to innovate in their fields. And collaborating with Soen on Unreal Engine has allowed them to go far beyond that. By the way, the two 3D assets behind us represent the beginning of our adventure with Unreal, the 48 Volt E drive, what a beauty. And the Citadis XO5. But wait, I think I see our physical twins in the audience. Hey, Alexei, Mo, and Adeline, over to you. So please, a huge applause to Alexei and Adeline. Um, so the idea, I think, uh, we will be starting by presenting the companies for those who don't know Alstom, Valeo, and so on. And we'll start with uh, Valeo. So uh, let's go. The automotive industry is changing more than ever. But one thing has remained the same. For a hundred years, Valeo's onboard innovations have been by your side. We've always drawn our strength from R&D. And today, we need to go faster for the future of our children for our planet and for more intelligent mobility. To meet these new challenges, our engineers are thinking bigger while considering even the smallest details. We're radically accelerating electrification, revolutionizing driving assistance, integrating lighting everywhere, reinventing life on board, and we're committed to reducing our carbon footprint. Through their talent and commitment, the women and men of Valeo are building the mobility of tomorrow. Infinity is our engine. And uh, just to just to be in uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, just to be clear, I'm not at Valeo Group, but I'm more in the electrification way. So uh, the purpose and the the details I will give it will be uh, about my division, which is power. And now to you, Alexi.
So just 30 seconds to present my physical one. Uh, so Alexis Bonnet, I am uh, today in charge of the design activities at Alstom, meaning the design of the trains in our, uh, interiors, exteriors for all the customers in the world and all the type of platforms. And as you just saw, we, are already, we have already uh, not one foot, but probably two feet uh, in the virtual world. So we will be uh, explaining that today with you. And finally, Thoen. Thank you. So I am uh, Mohamed Marouane and uh, I am the CEO and uh, co-founder of Soen. I co-founded Soen with Freddy Coné, my associate. And my role in the company is uh, helping our client see all the possibilities with real-time technology and new image technology and create with them concepts and tools to innovate in their field and their need inside and outside the company. Uh, and there is a very special reason why this panel today. Um, I won't try to say the longest title of session ever, uh, because I can't, but the idea here is we've been doing with Valeo and Alstom um, a way of changing the, their, the way that they use their digital assets and trying to innovate and create new use cases. And for that, we have this concept of brand digital heritage. And with the brand digital heritage, the idea is that we can bring all these assets to different type of use cases. And we've been successfully implementing this from, I think, three years ago with uh, Valeo and Alstom, and we wanted to share this and how we did it and the challenges, challenges and the results. Um, so the big question is, what is the brand digital heritage? What we call brand digital heritage for us is really all the digital assets. We are not talking about just images, videos, 3D assets, everything, simulation data, animation. Um, but today, these uh, data and the, this digital heritage is, in the best cases, used uh, in a media content uh, that is shared. Or most of the time, these assets will be created for one unique uh, usage and then just stocked in, uh, in hard drives and there is no continuity. This is data that has value but it's not materialized and not used and not go from one side to the other side of the company. And there with our different approach come. Just one word on this slide, um, if I may. So I don't know if you know a bit uh, our industry, so the railway market. Uh, so I am speaking for Alstom today. And our products are quite long because we are speaking about trains and we need like large environments to be able to visualize them. So we have a lot of data a bit everywhere uh, in the engineering department, in the design department. Uh, it can be uh, 3Ds, PVD and so on. And the, um, again, the story today is to really to say how we can merge all this data and make something on it, build something on it that will be uh, evolutive all along the life of these uh, of these applications or tools. Let's say. And I think it's the same for uh, for you, Adeline. And, uh, yes, you? exactly. Uh, the thing is that when we started, we wanted to have exactly in the same space. Um, an environment uh, to bring all our uh, solutions with all the informations uh, to have 
uh, an help for the guys, the experts to talk to our customers. And it was important that, as I said, Alexi, that it was evolutive and uh, that we can improve and start continue to uh, implement and feed this environment. It was really important. And for that, Unreal Engine has a very, very strategic position. Because for us, Unreal Engine is bringing and putting a framework in front of this digital heritage. Unreal Engine is very strong with all of set of tools to manipulate real time. Uh, Unreal Engine is deployed in different type of platform, Windows, Linux. Uh, we can access different type of uh, devices from simple screen to big LED screen to headset, etc. And with what we develop inside of Unreal Engine as, uh, and the access to the source code, we can create these tools and make it more efficient to exploit and deploy this digital heritage. And we are not talking about just having, for example, an asset used in multiple use cases for one department. We are talking about having this asset that is bringing value to all the different type of, uh, of uh, department in a, co a company, from the engineer to the marketing and, uh, and to the communication. Uh, and the idea, of course, always, because we need ROI, we need to maximize this value for the company. But it can start with one need and one asset. So how did it start for both of you? Maybe I will start, I will be older. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, actually, in 2021, uh, we wanted to create what we call uh, multimedia. So as I said before, it was something, uh, a place where we are bringing all the information about our solution. Um, I'm communication, I'm inside the marketing. So it was important that our customer have um, like the essential, the, the really basis of what we are doing and all the, uh, the customer benefits and all the information in the same way, but experience it in a different way. Because um, our solutions today in Valeo Power Division is scalability and standardization. So we worked on a storyline and we wanted to have like a city, a world dedicated to our range, the full range of solutions we have in our division. So it started like that. And um, we tried uh, to see who could help us. And in this adventure, we we are not considering Soen as uh, a, a supplier, but more a partner, because we are creating together a story for today and for the future. So it started like that. Uh, <clears throat> on Alstom's side, it was uh, it was more, let's say, based on the you know we are you let's say, allez, uh, weekly doing some presentation to very VIP, to VIP customers, to like minister, CEO of operators, and so on, to sell trains. And uh, as we have multiple business units or product lines, like running stocks, meaning we are selling trains, uh, we can also operate and maintain trains, or we can also distribute softwares to, uh, for autonomous metros, hardware, and so on. So these product lines were not at all consistent in the way that we were presenting them to the customers. So imagine like a minister of transport uh, and it's a true story, uh, that we welcomed in Alstom. We had these nice 3D uh, tools for all the trains because we were the design. We were producing already this kind of, uh, let's say, contents. And on the other side, the two other product lines in the company were there with just a bit poor PowerPoints, let's say. So it was very, very inconsistent with very technical concepts, very boring to, to absorb for this kind of people. Uh, so the, the starting point was really and truly this, uh, this presentation to this Minister of Transport where we said, okay, we need to define like a digital portfolio of our activities to be able to present all the domains or all the products in a consistent way. And that's why um, it was in December, something like this, uh, the, let's say the trigger. Uh, we contacted three uh, external companies and so on answered to the, to the RFP 
with uh, some examples from Valeo. So I have to admit that we were uh, inspired. It was clearly in the, in the direction that Thank we you. were uh, targeted <laughs> at this time. So bravo. Um, and then, yeah, the, the story started on that. Uh, it was not so easy at the beginning. And we, let's say, we, we had a very, very uh, accelerated phase because of the uh, international event seven months later. So it was not, let's say, at the beginning. Uh, we, we didn't have this in mind at the no, beginning. No, no, it, was, it wasn't in mind. Yeah. And I, I remember well, I, like you said, we, w when we presented uh, the value uh, multimedia to Alexis, mm. he, he's like, yeah, yeah, that's very cool. <laughs> We need something like that, but for mm -hmm. trains. Uh, but th something very interesting to, to see is uh, both of these projects started with one need and was oriented toward a specific goal before becoming something much bigger. Um, and for that, I, I, I want to, to both of you to share the journey because it's not just preparing the project or showing it. It's really, we, you need someone that have a vision and the ambition to bring these new technology in these big companies and to be an ambassador because everyone has already its own uh, pipeline and way to doing things. So it's not that easy to bring new technology. So what's the journey to make this uh, unreal vision a reality? Uh, not an easy journey for, for me, actually. And <laughs> because in Valeo, um, the power of uh, an automotive supplier is like its mock-ups, like the physical ones. So uh, in the automotive industry, uh, usually we are presenting, we are going to see our customers with big mock-ups, very, uh, very heavy, very big, and with demo cars and so on. So when I presented the project to have this multimedia with digital twins of our solutions uh, to be more um, efficient, uh, cost effective because it means that we will uh, reduce our transportation and so on and we will have this uh, kind of uh, uh, digital mockups to show and present to uh, to the customers the first first reaction was always no no why because they want to touch it they want to see it and if they want they, they don't see it physically they will not believe it. So uh, it was really complicated to let them know that it's not because it's digital that it's not existing. Um, no, no, it's the other way, actually, because everything that is in this multi uh, multimedia is physically existing, actually. It's really uh, something that we have in uh, our showroom, physical showroom and so on. So it was first... Um, an educative journey uh, with all the departments, especially R&D, to, uh, to gather all the information, so all the Katia and Step files, uh, to give to Soen. Uh, we worked together um, because as uh, Alexi had, we also had like a deadline. It was the IAA 2021. So IAA is the an, uh, auto show in Germany. And we wanted to present and launch this uh, multimedia during uh, this event. So actually, we decided to work with Soen mid of May 2021. So they had like four or five months to develop a world, a, a full world for us. So it was quite uh, crazy things to do, but uh, they do, they did it actually. And um, and for the first step. It was really difficult to get all the information in the in the, the in, in the same same dossier and so on and in the same step actually. Yeah. So we decided to, uh, to 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 make by layers, and we said, okay, the first step we will bring a full range, but just one motor of our smallest one motor of each each side and performance of our motors. And then we will continue to develop when people will accept and uh, to work on this kind of digital things. I don't know if it was the same for you. But when people get more money to invest in, but uh, <laughs> no, no, so the, um, yeah, so as soon as you have convinced, uh, let's say in-house in your company, it's always a bit difficult to align all the people. Get the 3Ds is one thing. We were w one of the big providers of 3D, so it was the easy part for us. The comp 
complicated part was more to uh, get all uh, communication directors, marketing directors around the one table and to align them product line per product line toward one and unique uh, tool or goal, let's say. So it took uh, it took a bit of uh, of time, like six months, some, something like this. And um, and during all these phases, uh, you see uh, on the screen, but we started by really this sketch uh, phase where we created this city almost from scratch because there was a base uh, at Valeo already. Uh, and as I said, as we have large products, we needed like every kind of context to be able to present automated people mover for airports, uh, metro, uh, sub, uh, enfin, metro underground stations, uh, like countryside for regional trains and so on. So it's, uh, it was a huge job also in terms of architecture, how to create all the context to be able to present the full portfolio in it. Uh, and this is very important to, on our side that uh, when we started this project, the first step for us is really to understand the, the product itself, understand how this product will be used. Uh, and also, one of the key things is the context, because the idea is not just having a configurator or a visualizer of product, is to put the product running in a context, to make the comprehension of this product better, easier for everyone. Uh, and uh, and for this, that's why the virtual environment was uh, key there. And we designed together the key component of this environment that can show and bring this context to the product. And also something very important for Valio and Elstom is, like Adeline said, um, you need to believe in it because it's an industry that uh, have the habit to have the product in front of them, the physical product. So we need to get right the, the realism and the fidelity of uh, the product. And for that, with systems uh, in Unreal Engine uh, and the shading system and all the tools, it, uh, we could iterate and get the right material get the right type of lighting uh, and to bring it and make it easier to believe in. Uh, and from the moment that we started showing the, these results, then I think that this work to converting and bringing the rest of the company become easier because they see the product, they see the context and they see it in front of them and they see, okay, it's better than just having a video in front of us or an image. Uh, and also something that we, we can talk about is both of you asked us something very similar is how can we see the invisible and the invisible when you are having a physical mock-up or a concept of a software it's not easy to explain and the example of Alexis of the PowerPoint explaining uh, a software part it was 50 slides with a lot of text to understand something that was completely understood and like one minute inside Unreal. So the difference and the value you see it directly. Yeah. And the uh, unanimated animated also, because yeah. uh, in power division, if you are not experiencing the, the electric motor, like driving a car, an electric car, you can't interact directly with the, the motor and the solution we are providing. So it was really important to have this kind of experience and leverage actually the, the customer experience. So after this long journey, but intense journey, let us see the results. And for Alstom.
Uh, ju just a uh, <laughs> precision on that, it's like a video indeed, but everything is available. We have all the 3D assets, so it's like a giant sandbox for us today. Uh, and you can interact with more or less everything and navigate uh, in this large environment again. Uh, th something that was very important for us for both of these uh, universes is the, f the application, the virtual universe in itself, you have this ability to have a global view on everything, on the company and what they do, and have directly the ability to zoom in and focus in one specific area of the company, one specific asset, one specific service. And everything is running uh, real time and you can move from part to part and you are not constrained. You are inside the universe and you move and you present and you test how you want to do it. Um, but this what you, what we see here is I can say it is a video from one application, and it's not the limit uh, the limit of the uh, brand digital heritage. Uh, so let's talk about how to drive this project forward and how it can propagate to other use cases. Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, for us, uh, after the evangelization of uh, of digital uh, assets and the importance of digital digitalization in our company. Um, I got it, the idea last year uh, because someone said uh, still we have mockups that people see but don't interact with. So it's really an issue. We have the multimedia. Yes, it's cool. But uh, we want to have something more. So uh, we discussed with Mohamed. We consult a lot, uh, Mohamed, uh, to, uh, to bring alive ideas we have. Um, and this idea was to have an XR uh, experience. So we wanted to have what we call the digital uh, showroom. So the very beginning, it has been launched during the CES at Las Vegas on our confidential showroom. And it was, um, it was applicated on a physical uh, part, which was the, the e uh, Axel 16 and around this mock-up, uh, we had their digital twins and we could interact with that. You could explode it, the view, you had media inside. Uh, you could go in a virtual showroom, like full virtual uh, view. And um, at, this, at this point, we decided for Beijing Auto Show in April, so two months uh, to develop. Uh, from the digital showroom, an experience to put in the public area. So it was, it's what you are saying here. Um, and what was the digital showroom? It was like a tool, a digital tool, to help the, 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 the value experts to explain and really be a companion to the customers about our, uh, our assets. And uh, they could take the headsets, uh, but they could also have a screen and the, the expert could explain from a tablet and accompany, like be with the, the customer and explain what he was seeing in his uh, headset or on the, the TV. And here we decided to develop like a really free experience. The person is really alone. Uh, we still can help this person with the tablet, so you can see what she's seeing, actually. And she can interact by herself with our products. And the experts are around to help. And if it, what I saw in Beijing, it's uh, most of the time people had more questions, so it was bringing more discussion and an open discussion for more information, more meetings afterwards. So it was really important for us. And uh, what's, um, what's important here is, like Adeline said, we had these iteration cycles 
and we've done it very fast. We moved from one experience to another experience, and we could do it because we already put the, the uh, digital heritage inside of Unreal, and we already have this technological brick that we prepared, and we could test, try, learn, and create and develop the use case. And this is something very important also for us, is to understand each, uh, each time the, the expert or the person that is going to, to use it. Uh, is it something that he will uh, control? Is it something that he will, uh, the way that he will interact with the client so that will be coming? And for that, we, we need to understand the way the person manipulated the technology to create the tech itself behind it and to augment uh, this uh, human interaction. Um, and it was, I think, the same for, for, for Alstom. We went from the virtual universe to something totally different and all those use cases. Yeah, I will go very quick on this one. But yeah, so a digital experience where, where, where you have like a physical device and you can interact with the 3D assets again from the Alstom virtual universe. Uh, and here you are chasing cyber threats. <laughs> it's fully different from the rest. <laughs> yeah. But again, two months. We produced yeah. this series game in two months because we have the environment ready and we set up a different lighting to bring the cyber threat uh, and we created the system to have the answer and the way that you, can, you, you find the cyber threat. But it was possible only because we have already the virtual universe of Alstom. And this is very uh, comforting for us and helping because even the communication that we have with the expert, we don't just, we are not in theory looking at concepts, we are inside the virtual uh, environment discussing, showing things, trying, scouting for maybe an environment to do something. We, we talked about the most recent use cases, but we created videos from uh, the virtual. It's really a content machine, images that are used to uh, impress or uh, elements like these. We created small application that can put on the web. There is a lot of use cases that come from the same assets and all of them e are easier to make because we go from the same origin. I was talking about the content creation and you saw a little bit of it in the beginning, but um, the, the human side also, the human performance is a part of the digital heritage of a company. And with uh, a virtual production studio and with the motion capture studio, we have these and so on, uh, we have our own, we can record and uh, put these performance inside of the virtual universes. And it makes it easier. For example, Alexis could have a, um, a presentation uh, inside the virtual universe. And like you saw, we have the motion capture recorded and showed directly here. Uh, we can go farther. This has easy use cases, but we can see, for example, an expert movement on, a, on an asset, how he, he can manipulate it, and we can bring it with a metahuman, for example, inside of the virtual uh, universe. And one more thing, I need to specify it's by Steve Jobs. I don't want to have Apple lawyers in front of me. Uh, these use cases can get very far from the industry, but in a very useful way. And we have a very special something to uh, present to you today, but I'll let the video speak by itself. As I was saying at the beginning, Alstom is digitalized, but nobody knows it. <laughs> so we are working on the brand, uh, let's say, uh, visibility uh, at our scale, let's say, because we have a very good communication team who is doing that. But uh, Soen has proposed uh, to, to leverage on this uh, Fortnite platform and also on the 3D assets, again, of, of the Alstom virtual universe to create this first episode of what could become like... Uh, you know, the first of a, a long series. Um, here it's clearly interesting for us, but also for our 
customers tomorrow because you can train your task force in a depot. So it's the real kind of operation that we are performing. So indeed, you can attract young generations and so on for, for employer branding, but also for um, it could become tomorrow a business for Alstom to to sell this kind of game to our customers to train their task force uh, on, the, on the side. Um, and always, you know, gamifying a bit, uh, some sometimes a bit boring stuff can bring a lot of uh, lot of fun. So uh, it will be available uh, next Monday normally. So I think exactly. you confirm, yeah. Yes, that's confirm. correct. So, yeah. Into the depot available <laughs> on Mondays. You yeah. can play it on your console, PC, yeah. or your phone. So just to summarize a little bit some data, um, so between the two, if we start with Alstom, we have uh, a five square kilometer universe. Uh, we integrated uh, 30 products and services inside of the universe. We have at least on the side of Soen, because there is a lot more, uh, 59 video, 200 uh, and -ish, uh, images, eight different applications. We serve seven business services, eight country, and right now, one Fortnite island. And everything came again from the same mm. digital heritage. And, and on what we can add on that, uh, because we, are, we have a team also at Alstom who is really dedicated to produce content. So we are using all these assets uh, every day to create new videos, new images, uh, new context for our design presentations, and so on. And on Vareo, the world is a little bit smaller, but contain a lot of different technologies. So we are on one square kilometer universe. We have 39 products right now and services, five different applications, nine country, and 40 successful deployment around the world. Actually, just uh, to, uh, to summarize is for Valeo side, the use is not like a global brand uh, image with uh, what Alstom did. Uh, for us, it was a huge a uh, use, sorry, uh, for customers and how we will communicate and get a more intimate, intimate uh, mm -hmm. customer intimacy um, and how we can make some fun and a different way to present our solutions. So yeah. it was really the starter of uh, all that. It was not at all uh, meant at the beginning to become a brand thing, but uh, enfin, on Alstom side also. But uh, when you look at all the assets that we have, uh, we clearly increased the consistency again into the communication that we are doing, addressing on social networks and so on. Because all the videos are based on the same assets, same environment, so everything is fully uh, with the same look and feel. So yeah, it was quite a, a huge... Uh, Added value also for the brand at the end. Yeah. That the design department uh, force. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a bit. I have to admit. <laughs> Remember, you can start small but go very big. So, what's next in your vision? I, I, I can. Um, alors, what's next today? You, we we didn't mention that, but it's uh, only a standalone version. So this Alstom virtual universe can be used for every kind of event, but you need a very powerful computer. And uh, normally it's September, we should have the online version. So it means that in September, every Alstom employees will have the access to this virtual world with the capability to make remote sessions in it uh, with a leader, you know, so leading a, a session of 20 people, for example. So for Alstom employee, uh, onboarding, training, and so on, it will be quite huge. Uh, and we never know in a close future, we can also imagine to open some parts of this virtual world to our customers or even to the public uh, on our website. And for Valeo side, uh, we continue to improve. Uh, we want to have an iterative uh, way. So um, now the people are... Uh, believing in the digital uh, assets. They want to be trained, so they ask us to have the XR uh, experience all over the world. So we are working with uh, Soen to uh, be putting some sets uh, all around Valeo countries. Uh, we also continuing to develop uh, for the Mondial de Paris uh, in October, uh, the experience, the public experience. Um, and we are currently working to integrate 
all the thermal uh, all the thermal products that are uh, inside power division now. So we continue to bring some new technology bricks. We continue to develop and extend our world in digital and. Um, and also we want to continue the adventure so we will continue to improve and uh, and the digital we also try to find the right link between the multimedia you saw at the very beginning and the digital because it's two tools today that the digital is based on the multimedia assets but there are no link they are they have no link to today that we are trying to find yeah, one of the idea that we had together is that we could start a presentation inside the multimedia and a screen. And then when we have, for example, a client interested in a specific product, they put on the headset and this product with a click on the uh, multimedia come to the headset and they see it on scale one, interact with it, have an exploded view. This is something that you didn't show because it's confidential, but all what you saw in Valeo Universe have the full interior of the part and exploded view. So we have even the small boards, the small screws, and uh, this is very important when you have a technical presentation running in here to see how they integrate the technology. And on our side, we have also things coming next. It's a small teasing, but uh, we are working in our own project called Visionera, and Visionera will be a SaaS solution. It will be a software platform that will leverage all the knowledge that, that we uh, amassed and collaborated with our client this past year, all the bri technical bricks that we created to make it easier to integrate a digital asset, to make it easier to show it and to share it and to iterate on it. And to bring it in the daily work life or, uh, of the employee of our client and make everything accessible in one click. You can create your perfect app from your digital asset on your own without the need to go and develop and code. So follow us, you will see it soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.